Welcome to my new Let's Play on Ballam Road Dairy Farming, Pemberton's, Burke's Farm, take your pick, for episode one, with me, Mr Silly P. I have arrived, I'm back in the UK, I flew into Blackpool Airport just up the road. I've traded America with this roller coaster, actually to be fair, Blackpool, up to the, what is it, northwest from here. Um, they've got roller coasters and stuff there, so I suppose I'm not that too far away really, am I? Uh, we're in Lytham St Anne's. I am... Um, this is the kind of the, the introduction, I guess, the, the start of things. Um, as you can see, I've traded in my Jeep. We've got a trusty van. Good old-fashioned transit van is what you need, don't you? Um, I'm going to go to... I'm going to pop and see Pemberton's. I'm going to go to Pemberton's farm. Now, in the real world, it has been suggested I do this at some point, which I'm hoping to do. So the weird thing is, I'm, I'm hoping at some point to be able to kind of do this drive, really. We have bought a little property further up to the north. Um, and the, the premise behind this being, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to set ourselves up as kind of like a local contractor to help out. I want to try to, I know it sounds awful, um, kind of ingratiate myself um, with um, Hamilton's... Uh, farm shop and dairy really and um, maybe help them out with contract work stuff around the farm anything really I can turn my hand to um, I need one of those little name badges hi my name is Mr Silly P happy to help that's what I need imagine I'm walking in like that I, that would be um, so I'm going to pop to the farm shop pick up something for my dinner have a chat see if I can have, maybe have a little look around then we'll head up to our uh, our new property it's just on the road here I think there we go. We'll turn in just here. Now, things are a little different to usual because, and and this is you know not um, this is not kind of storyline based. This is just setting the scene and explaining a few things. I'm only going to explain this once. I'll do it now at the start, and we'll kind of move from here. Um, Pemberton's farm own a lot of the land around here and I'm on my G portal server so I'm running this on multiplayer for a couple of reasons one I'm not going to go into yet but the other being that we've got different things set up so Pemberton's farm own whatever land they own they've got their own bank account they've got their own stuff they can do whatever they want to do I have got my own farm and I've got my own bank account I've got 20,000 that's all I've got I blew all mine when they came um, What did I leave still run with? Three and a half million. It's an expensive van and the flights over weren't cheap. Um, so I've got 20 grand. They've got their own money. Um, there are local contractors as well because uh, Pemberton's use contractors when they do the silage work and stuff like that. And the farm is already up and running as a going concern. They have cows. They have them in various different barns and buildings. And I have tried to, as close as possible, within reason recreate things um to how they are in real life i mean like i say it's a facsimile of um let's just say that because some of the things that i wanted to include that in my mind i thought we had i don't know why and again it's like going from 15 to 17 to 19 to 22 you think we've definitely got this mod available and you go and check and think, we haven't um, it was obviously fs19 or fs17 so i've tried where i can um, to grab different things and make it appear a bit more realistic. Now, this is going to be a blend of realism, as in things that I've seen, things that I know about Pemberton, some watching um, Tom Pemberton on his YouTube channel. This is, I suppose, a little bit kind of fanboyish, you know, because I know a little bit about it and that kind of thing. But then there's going to be blended with some elements of what if and what about if I did this, or we did that, or I could do that, or what about... See, I'm thinking, because they don't really do arable farming. There are local arable farmers, and the arable farmers, um, when they do their harvesting, uh, Tom Pemberton was saying the other day that they need to sort out some more straw at some point. Um, and one of the local farmers, I think, does, does barley. They refer to the, the barley bales, so it'd be from barley crop or wheat crop, whatever. I might try and set myself up 
to buy some fields and do arable farming so I can supply the farm. So whilst I can also come and help and contract, I can supply them with stuff they need, which leads me on to what I'm going to be doing in today's episode as well. If we have a quick look at the map, you'll see a lot of the periphery, the golf course, there's two golf courses here. You've got the, Lith Lith the Litham St Anne golf course and then Fairhaven, I think, is over this side. Um, so there, I mean, maybe there'd be some lawn mowing stuff and things like that we could do. But all of these fields here, all of this stuff is not owned by them. So there's potential for contract work, there's potential for buying. I can buy up some small fields as I start off, that kind of thing. I'm thinking. I'm also aware. Let's go into the farm shop. I'm going to go and grab myself something. Something for us teas. This gentleman going. Oh, it's not going to go in. Okay. But the other thing I was thinking. Um, is uh, they have got sheep, as you can see. So I'm thinking the contract I've taken on straight away, because I'm going to do some contracting, is going to be for baling silage bales, but have got to be delivered to Homestead Farm, I think it is. But I'm thinking if I don't wrap all of them, because it's baling and wrapping, and keep some of them as grass. When I finish the contract, if they're spare bales, I can kind of work it out as I go. When I deliver the first load, do my usual, we'll do a bit of maps. I could potentially bring grass bales here as a kind of an offering. You know, look what I've bought you. Hope this helps kind of thing to help, help feed the sheep, I think. It's what they often do when they have like open days and stuff like that. You can come in and come through and you can walk up this bit and you can have a look at the animals. I know I did a little bit of this on the uh, on the map tour. I'm thinking potentially further down the line we might even look at some horses. Tom Pemberton's sister has got horses. Um, so we might put some horses in here. I don't know. It, like I say, I just wanted to come on. So the other proviso with this, there's no hard and fast rules. There's no set in stone. Um, I don't know how long, how many episodes I'm going to do or anything like that. It's not necessarily going to be a 30, 40 episode one. It might be 10 episodes as far as I know. It could be 15, could be 20. You know what I'm like it. You know, it just all depends. So um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have a word with them in the farm shop. See if they, you know, if I can speak to Tom, that'd be great, or his dad or whatever. And see if they mind me having a bit of a wander with my, with my camera. Have a look around the farm, show you what it's like now. Then we'll whiz up the road. I'll show you the contract we've got. Um, so, field 17, mow the grass, bale the grass, wrap it to make size bales, take it to homestead. So if I mow, bale, wrap some, deliver them, if I can keep some as grass, because there's often bales left over. Oh, mind you, hang on, am I going to, oh, I just used their equipment, as I say, um, otherwise I'm not going to be able to move any of the stuff. So yeah, bear with me a minute, and um, we'll see if I can get permission, we'll have a bit of a wander around, and I'll show you where we're at and what the situation is. Just a lovely bite to eat here as well. They do all sorts of produce, all locally sourced around Lancashire. If it's not provided by the farm here, it's gathered from around the local uh, the local area. So, I've got permission. I'm going to have a bit of a wander around. Uh, the other thing I'm going to say as well, because of the way I'm doing this, every now and again, there may be a little bit of a, a stutter or a judder. And I don't know if you're going to see that your end, but you might do. Um, so the milk impala, this is interesting because in, in real life, the milk impala is about to get a massive overhaul and they've just started the first process that. If we come down the side here, as I say, not all of it's exact. There's cows uh, in various different locations. I know they separate them all out and I need to a bit more kind of get my head around all that. Cause it's interesting how you can watch a, uh, a YouTube channel and you kind of watch it and you're going to get caught up in the day to day and the routine and all the stuff that's going on. I know they have a very set system of how sort of different animals get to move to different places but um we've got a mixture of uh, dairy cows out here and some beef some of the beef stock obviously eventually comes in goes into the farm shop uh we've got across the road at the other farm i think there's more cows over there that's mainly beef stock i think in the new barn which is the new build we've got i think a mixture in here as well we've got some Dairy and some Angus in here as well, I think. Don't think there's anything in this one. But as far as machinery and equipment goes, the new midden, there's a little bit in there. So we couldn't get 
Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a Prime X. It's a British company that um, Tom Pemberton bought, paid for himself out of his own money, a Prime X slurry tanker. Obviously, that's not available. This is the kind of the closest thing. Um, really, single uh, single axle, large chunky tyre. Let's have a bit of a look around. They've got a couple of barrel trailers. They've got a long one they use sometimes. There's um, the little short one. They've got a little dump trailer. It's not huge. Um, and then they have got, I know they've got a fertiliser spreader. I think they call it till. Um, but anyway, little, I think theirs is a, I will say it's a fella. They had a little one, but they got a little fella one. They did borrow one. They had a Malone one recently as well. Um, they've got some beehives. We've got some beehives here as well. The cows are all in this um, pasture. There's another pasture up there. Bale shredder. And they've got a Malone mower with the green and yellow. That's, the, again, kind of close as I could get. I, I did an approximation of... Um, now, their tractor, their original tractor, was a Hurleyman, a silver Hurleyman. And it's um, an XB100, I think, which, unfortunately, we, I couldn't get. But I found an old... I've got an old Hurleyman. So we've got an old Hurleyman in a sort of silvery colour, which is going to represent their older tractor. The newer tractor they've just got, they got rid of their old, and they had a Case 855 that was on their loader. They've just got rid of that, and they've got um, a Hurleyman XA90, which is lower horsepower, but has potential to go up to, I think, 120. We don't have anything like that at all, but they did have on trial recently one of the newer Hurleymans. Theirs, I think, was only a 135 or a 125, and this is a 165. Again, closest I could kind of get to, but we're going to do a combination of both of those. Um, they've got a um, Keenan Mech Fiber uh, feed mixer, which again, we we haven't got available. So it's just an, an approximation of, there's a little bit of silage in the clamp here. Um, and would you believe it, all of this got put in, and it's amazing, it's really cool. In the last week, because they're having the new parlor done. Oh, they're producing already. Um, these, there's a couple of walls. The, the scale of some of this is, is to fit it on the map as well. This has got five rows um, with different milking bits. So obviously this is a little bit different, but yeah. It's good enough for our purposes. Yeah, this wall's been knocked down. <laughs> they got rid of it. They want to change all this. They put some light. They're going to put some lighting under here. They might put a new roof on it. Um, they want to have it as a as a it's like a showing place, really, um, for for the public to come and watch and see what's going on. But for the time being, they've got a mobile milking station, 15 down one side, based on a trailer back. If you don't watch the channel, go and watch it. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, that's that wall's not there. I, I won't be able to take that down, but that's just the way it is. So um, and then they've got uh, their old. They call it the Manny Three. They've got a little old Manny Two. Um, but again, this is the closest in size, and because the colour configuration. Now, if you've got this installed, the um, is it the P41? I think it's the P41, isn't it? Um, it will appear. Um, but because we're on the multiplayer server, that didn't quite work. But we have got one. It's in red. So, yes, it should be a Manitou, but it's... So, that's the set in the scene. That's that's the that's where we're at, really. Um, this pasture has been removed. So, it's open. There's no cows in this pasture. What I'm going to do is go and grab the van. And we'll head up the road to well, where I'm going to be living. I'll show you that. Then we'll whiz down, pick up some equipment. I need to find out where field 17 is, actually, because that's where I've got a head. How will I be all the way down where, there? How do I get to that? Um, I'm thinking, I don't know if I can access it from this track here, maybe. Or I might have to go all the way down to the south and access it from that one. We'll have to have a look. Um, the equipment I need is down at the, the, uh, the store. So anyway, yeah, this is where we're at. Um, so this is this is kind of my dream, in-game and in real life, really. To come and visit, just pop in and say hello. It would be nice just to come here and say hello, you know, but I, I would love to at some point sort out 
if at all possible, just a, a walk and talk or just spend the day just walking around with them, see what they do and film a bit and that kind of stuff. It would be incredible, wouldn't it? Might even get to use my drone. I haven't used my drone yet. Bought that, prepped it all. Where I live, we're in a no-fly thing. It won't let me fly it, so it means taking it elsewhere. Um, I, ju I just haven't used it. So, yeah, at some point, we'll get on with that. Anyway, and on console, we didn't get the DJI mod, which I, when it popped up, I thought, that would just be so cool. Just think of the filming possibilities with that. Anyway, so, yeah, we're here. We have arrived. Is it just me? Do you, you know, when you start a new Let's Play, when you go to a new map, to a new area, I assume you've picked it for a reason. You've picked it for whatever reason it might be. So I think I might even be able to help with milk delivery, but I think, unfortunately, milk doesn't spawn as crates of milk, which would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Um, it just comes, you, you collect it with the tanker, but that would be cool. Go out and do the the milkman duties they do. Anyway, all that being said, I'll hopefully help with some of that at some point. We'll get some of the milk into you know, into the parlour. We'll get some stuff being produced for the farm shop and that kind of thing. So, it's not traffic. So take these as, you know, it's characters really within a storyline, within a let's play. So this Tom obviously does his channel. There's his dad who he refers to as the Ginger Warrior. His dad's name's Andrew. His sister's Penny, and her husband is Des, I think. Des. Luke works on the farm. Heidi did and does sometimes come back. She went off to university. I think she's trained to be a vet veterinarian. So in that field, I think we've got Angus and we've got uh, limousines, I think. And then there might be some more over at the other farm. So yeah, we've got stuff spread around all over the place. So like I said, I'm just hoping hoping to be able to help out in some way. Along here somewhere, I'm not, it's not going to work unfortunately because there's, I mean, there's a little bit, there are some trees that could be cut down but not forestry per se. But I suppose I could, I could plant a little plantation but anyway there's a little art place and I thought well, that would actually work really well with the art supplies, you know, have that put in maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I'm just kind of, you get a bit of a buzz, you know, you think oh all these possibilities, all the things I could do, all the directions we can go. The things we can try out so what we've done if you look on the actual google maps this house here is under construction well construction is completed so we've got a little farmhouse this is what i spent some of mine on as well but not obviously not 3.5 million what was i watching the other day i was watching something on telly and they were talking about oh the detectorist have you seen detect the detectorists with mackenzie crook and i can't the guy's name about uh, guys that go out metal detectors in the UK. I think there were three series of it. Oh man, if you get a chance to watch it, it's some of the funniest, best. The comedy is, is genius. It's very, very clever writing. There's all sorts of amazing things in it. And um, his friend says to me, if you haven't got a shed by the time you're 30 or something, you failed as a man. <laughs> So I thought, well, I'll have a shed, I'll have a little man cave, and I've got a little garage as well. So we've got our man cave, we're sorted. But anyway, so this will be this will be our kind of our base of operations. And um, this, I believe, is possibly even bought. It's on the land that's owned by. I'm just trying to think. Where are we? We're up here. Yeah, um, we're on Pemberton land now. So anyway, that's that's where we're going to be living problem is without permission which I might do you know, if I can get permission um, if I want to add anything or build anything in we'll be able to sort that out it's a whole new world of possibilities that have opened up um, something I hadn't considered before because again I kind of got stuck in my ways you know and it's, it's I'm finding what I'm doing now a little bit daunting because it's a little bit different um, running my, my Let's Play on a multiplayer server is something a little bit different. But it does open up some possibilities for some different things. So yeah, whilst when we start out, there's going to be some sheep work. There's probably going to be some dairy stuff. If, like I say, if, if um, Pemberton's get back to me and say, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you help out. We'd love to have you on our books as a contractor. Then maybe I can go on and do some work there on the farm with them, for them, that kind of thing. Um, 
but what I'm hoping to do, if I can do a few more contracts like this, they might mean doing some, like I said before, doing off camera maybe, because there's a few bailing contracts. I know I did it on Griffin, and I don't mind doing it. I love it. You know, we're in a different place, different environment. You know, like with any new map, the jobs stay the same, the maps and terrain changes. So I need to build up a bit of money. The fields that I've got my eye on to start off with are these ones here, and they're not that expensive. What we're looking at there. Oh, yeah, I've got um, precision farming on as well. Not seasons, but I've got precision farming on. 17 grand, 17 grand, 16, 20, 25, and 16, 22, 32. So they're within the realms of possibility. We could at least get some small fields of stuff done. I don't have any farm equipment, so I'm going to have to build up. You know, it's not necessarily, oh, we've got 20 grand, we haven't got a lot of money. Let's get this done. If I can at least get the bailing done. Oh, whoa, that didn't want to stop. We'll try down the bottom. You watch, it's going to be the access from the top of the field, isn't it? We'll get the mowing done. I don't know if I can set this to... I don't think I can set this to windrow, or can I? But I think they've supplied us with a windrow, even if they can't. So, field 17. Now, I'm assuming there's been some contractor jiggery pokery going on um, because I did have a contract pop up the other day, which I thought, oh, that's a good one to start with. And it's not going to show now, I don't think. And it was for harvesting, but it said harvest. It, it had a harvester with a regular header and it said harvest the grass in field, blah, blah, blah. I thought, oh, uh, hang on a minute. That's a bit weird. So hopefully at some point we'll get some more of those. Actually, these are in single gates. This might be a little bit tight. Especially with all that on it. Um, we'll swing out wide. Right. We got there. I'm just wondering how this is going to work uh, moving forward. But we'll do our best. Um, when I get to the other side of the field, this is a big field. How much does this one pay? Oh, 26 grand. That's not so bad. I should have gone for one that's got yeah, big old mower rig. I can't remember what equipment we got for this one. I can toggle work mode, so I won't need a wind rower. That's cool. At least I don't think I will. Let's do that. It just depends as well how much this is going to let me... Uh, mow, whether it will let me mow right round the edges. We might do, we might get away with this. So I'm going to do what I've done before when I do these. I will mow past the edge of the field if it will allow me, because it's allowing me to win row. So we can gather as much extra grass up as we can, which should give me spare bales at the end as well. I mean, generally you have bales left over, but it doesn't always work that way. I will cut, there you go, it's not letting me cut all of it. So I'll cut out as far as it will let me. Sometimes going the other way around the field, for some reason, bizarrely, does it? So as you can imagine, this is going to take some time. So what I'll do is I'll bale it all first. I'll start wrapping. Once I've wrapped enough for a full load of wrapped bales, I'll take the bales up, I'll deliver them, and that'll give me a percentage delivered. That should then be out. I should be able to then work out how many it's going to take to complete the contract. Now, this is all new to me, you know, the, the area, the farming area, I don't know what's going to be expected for contracts, if you know what I mean. So it will be a bit of a test, a bit of a gauge. My only concern, as always, whenever I go to a new farming area, a new location, is are there going to be any local government changes? Are there going to be any new regulations and rules brought out that I'm going to have to adhere to? And if there are, how will it affect me moving forward, if you know what I mean? because sometimes you can just get going and the rules get changed and all of a sudden you find yourself in trouble. So we'll see, but hopefully we'll be okay. Just very quickly, I did go back around the other direction and I managed to mow a lot of the sections that were saying on the first way around it wouldn't let me do. 
So what I've decided to do is bring the wind rower up anyway, or over, up, over, and any of the bits that are off the side of the field, because when you come to bale, it won't always pick up grass that's off the field. So I thought I'll bring this up and I'll go around the edges. I might even, I might do the rest of it actually. I'm just thinking, because it's doing two wind rows at a time, it's just making it all a little bit um, neater and a bit more accessible. It means less passes. I mean, although I'm doing, so it's less passes, yeah, see what I mean? It's not picking all of it up. So what I'm going to have to do is go around the other way with the wind row as well. Um, whilst I'm doing less passes with the baler, I'm doing more passes with the wind rower. So I guess it just comes down to which way around you want to do it. Um, I could just decide I'm going to go around the edges, tie up the edges, then come in with the baler and bale because I'm going to have to do as many passes anyway with the wind rower. So yeah, it just... Whichever one you prefer doing, <laughs> you can do more passes with this, it's tied up to you. So what I should be able to do, if I go back the other way with this, that bit around there that it wouldn't let me pick up, it should. It doesn't always, it depends how far out past the edge of the field you've gone, but... Like now it might be just a little bit too far out. I know we might be alright. So what I'm trying to do is just make sure the windrow is inside the field edge, that's all. So this is going to be interesting. This is quite a narrow route through, especially over the bridge. Uh, uh, mowing's done, baling's done. The well, the wind rowing and baling is done. I've wrapped um, just over 14. I think I might have done 15. This I think holds 14. I'm sure it's 14 bales. But here's the thing. Um, I don't know how many bales I've done. I've, I haven't got a bale counter. There was no bale counter on the baler. I don't know if it's a multiplayer thing. Um, I also don't have the screen with all the info, the stats page. Uh, I suppose because you've got multiple farms potentially running, keeping track of multiple farms, which normally gives you um, this session and total for bales and trees and stuff like that. I don't appear to have that screen, so I don't know how many bales I've done. This is a little bit tight here. I think what I'm going to do when we leave here, we're going to go out north across. This is the farm, the other side of the road. Um, out near Fairhaven. Fairhaven Golf Course is just the other side of there. Them golf courses that way. 
So yeah, I don't see that many we got. So th this first load will tell us, hopefully, how many barrels I need to deliver. Hopefully it's not a catastrophically high number because well, I have, I've been on certain farms before where um, I've done the entire contract, got to end and not had enough bales. So I don't want that to happen. I'd like to be on one of those maps where you have spares. That would be nice, wouldn't it? That would do. I haven't got the angle too wrong. Oh, I should have probably wait. <laughs> there we go, operating position. Right, let's pick these up. Beacons off. Yeah, so I'll go out that way. It might be an easier route out and it'll take us further up to the north because Homestead Farm, where we've got to deliver these bales to, is up the north, up, actually up near where we put our, our house. These are some of the small fields I was talking about, about purchasing. So each one of these bales is 6,000 litres. Currently, grass is selling for £74 for a thousand. So a 6,000 litre bale, by my calculations, works out about £444 per bale. Um, so that's the decision I've got to make. If we do have grass bales left over, if I don't wrap them all and we deliver everything that's required, if I am going to take some to Pemberton's, do I give them to them as a gift, as a kind of hi, this is me, Mr. Silly P, happy to help. <laughs> or do I give them to them half price? Just say, look, okay, going rates 444. I'll only charge you 222 per bale. Or do I just go in full full price? No, that I'm not going to go full price. It's either going to be half price or free. I reckon free. Because it'll po probably get me sort of the access that I'm, I guess I'm hoping for. The potential contractor list. Um, I'll be paid for the contract anyway, so once I've completed the contract, I'll still get the money for the contract. So I probably would have kept the bells myself. If I was farming for me, I probably would have kept them. So it makes sense just to gift them to them, you know? And then they should have something they should be able to then feed to the sheep, because I'm pretty sure... I could be wrong, though. I need to double-check that. Um, the cows have all got feed. Now, it's interesting, some of the cow pens, and again, once I get access, I say once I get, if I get access, let's say that, if I get access, if they give me the nod, and I can um, be part of the Pemberton's farm team, then we'll have a look. But I'm pretty sure um, some of them have got feed full, but it's hay only, which only gives them 80% productivity. Some have got total mixed ration. So I guess moving forward, the idea is going to be silage harvesting, but also they're going to need straw, and that's going to be a problem if we haven't got any fields that come up with contracts, because there aren't that many fields available. If you remember from the from the main map, um, all these fields are kind of available, I guess. Pemberton's own those. Um, a lot of it's all grass. So the, the chances of picking up straw could be tricky so they may have to even buy some in or just do total mix ration with hay and silage that could work because if we're going to do silage in work on their fields we could do hay the big difference being in the real world um, they they make their total mix ration using silage they've got what is it selco they call selco a little bit of cake sometimes they put sugar beet in um, and the the feed the hay and stuff they often have bales out in the fields for them to eat so obviously we're doing it differently because the telbix ration we need to make will require silage and hay so maybe when we do a lot of their the mowing for Pemberton's whether it be contractors or whether I'm part of that some of the fields will silage harvest some of them will turn to hay whether that's loose might have been a bad idea actually using one of the Mind you, won't take the silage clamp won't take it. I'm just trying to think the best way around of doing it. Anyway, that's all. That's all. That's all pipe dreams. That's all in the future. We shall see. So we should come past here. So one of the small barns to the right, as we go past, has got 
um, beef stock in and I think the pasture, has the pasture still got beef stock in or is that empty now? I can't remember. I was just having a bit of a route around while I was up here. So there is a pasture here which potentially if we're not going to use we could hmm, we could utilise but where have they got there we go. It's got beef stock in there. There's cows everywhere but they are a dairy farm so you would expect nothing less. There you go. That's Fairhaven. So we'll take a long a long whiz out and when we get there we'll unload. I'll do the me calculations and then what I have to do is work out. I'll just do load after load until I hit that point. So I'll just be wrapping as I go. I don't want to wrap too many. I, I could deliver them silage bales. I could say to them look here, have silage bales. But if they're going to feed the sheep, that's not going to help. So I think grass or hay, in which case grass, because that's what we're going to have. It does feel very strange. I guess that's no different to any map that's of a real place, especially if you know that real place, whether you've been there or not. Um, six Ashes was the same because the amount of people that sent me, and same with Carmsden as well, people sending pictures and saying, look, this is the real Carmsden, this is the real Six Ashes. Um, I've been there, you know, these buildings are in the same place, this looks exactly the same. It's, it's always amazing, I think it's brilliant. And so... Right, remember, Mr. Silly P, stand the left hand side of the road. We're back in blighty, old chap. I am thinking as well, though, moving forward, if I'm going to buy myself a tractor, if I'm going to help out with contracting or just do contracting for other people or whatever I end up doing, or even if I start my own farm, which I could well do, I'm kind of looking at helping out at Pemptons, but there's no reason at all why I couldn't, why I couldn't start my own. Like I said, maybe do some arable stuff. Um, where do I need to go? Down here, I think. I'm going to need smaller tractors, there's no way, that, I mean, it's just great having this for doing this site kind of work, and I think one of the bailing contracts was used in Zerion. Some of these trackways and roadways are going to be way too tight. Now, whereabouts do I need to drop these? Oh, that's another one, isn't it? We're going to get in all right, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Is it just there? Let's double check. Um, I'm sure it's there. Let's have a look. That looks like it's about right, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And we'll keep a look at the uh, what the figures say. I have to say, I do, I'm, I'm liking, I suppose because Silver Run was so big and I did Griffin and that kind of stuff. I know not everyone likes tight yards and, and fencing and that kind of stuff. Okay, that, oh, we're going to have real trouble here. That's saying 20% completed, that didn't come up with anything for delivered. Well, I'm going to have to do another 14 regardless. It's going, to, it's going to take more than that. So on the next 14, I'll do that off camera. Hopefully something pops up. So I'm potentially looking at 14 bales did 27% of the contract. Is that right? I don't know. Hmm, okay. <laughs> See you later. I think... Um, can I drive out through there? It looks a little bit tight. There's me saying about I like... Uh, I like it when it's... I'm just thinking, can I go past the stately home? Probably not the best thing to do, is it? Or I suppose I could back out onto the road. It just adds that extra challenge. It's just a little bit more, you know, you've got to really think about stuff. You can't just go tonking around and take things for granted. You've got to really consider your actions and your, your direction and... 
your access, entry and exits from places. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Top tier, that. Top tier. Right. <laughs> See you in a bit. Well, I miscalculated somewhere along the way, but that's not a problem. It's in a good way. We are contract complete. Um, I delivered the second load, and it said 57%. But you know, sometimes it comes up in green, sometimes it says delivered, you know. But the discrepancy between the contract complete and delivered was 57% compared to 74%. So, okay, if 57% delivered, 28 bales at that point had been delivered, it worked out roughly I had 22 bales left to deliver. So I wrapped another 22. Took another load of 14, which means I've delivered 42, and it came up saying contract complete. So I've got eight rat bales and all of those grass left. So, happy days. I'm going to take the first load to Pemberton's. I'm going to drop them off. As a surprise, I'm just going to dump them in the yard. <laughs> they'll come out and there'll be a load of stacks of grass bales just sat there. Something is very weird though, I've also noticed bottom right, and again is this me? I'm sure. If you load things up normally it tells you what types of bales. That's still showing straw bales. Definitely grass bales, definitely 6,000 litres. Not that it matters, it's still going to still take 14 bales, I'll still be able to drop off 14 bales but... Whoops. That, that one a little bit so yeah we'll drop these off um, the bales I've got left the silage bales that I've wrapped um, for contracts they ferment straight away don't they? they should be silage straight away if I was doing them for me they wouldn't that was the big difference the problem I had on um, silver run wasn't it where I made a mistake well, it happens to the best of us um, so yeah I think they're going to end up with quite a few bales here, but that's not a bad thing, because the great thing with the grass bales is that they can sit there, unlike with the realismus seasons that, you know, there was, where your bales could rot or your loose could rot and that kind of stuff. They can just sit there. They can be used for feed, um, I say for feed, yeah, for the sheep, as grass bales. But what you can do, if you wanted to at some point, is to say, okay, well, let's just take that stack down let's spread them out on the floor, let's get a bale wrapper and then wrap them. So you, you can then wrap them further down the line if you wanted to. So that could work as well. I'm trying to think the best route back to Pemberton is probably the way we just went to go to Homestead and then rather than going left and north, just turn right and go south a little bit. That's not a bad load of bales to have left over, is it? Did I get the angle on that just right, did I? Come on. There we go. Just gonna whiz by those silage bales and double check that I'm not losing my mind. Oh man, I'm having a nightmare with these, aren't I? There we go. 14, so what would we reckon we got left? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, maybe fourteen, or maybe more. Could be another sixteen, so we could deliver about thirty bales to them. I might could deliver them just the silage bales as well. I think they're worth about two hundred eighty-six for a thousand liters, or something like that, at the biogas plant. Yeah, silage six thousand liters. So yeah, on a, if you're doing a contract like this, they will automatically become silage bales because it's asking you to wrap and deliver silage bales, but if you're doing yourself on your own fields, they'll need to, um, they will need to ferment first. The beacons on. Just deciding what way shall I go. I could just go back the way I, I through that narrow bit. I mean, turning around again here, if I cut across the grass, in the real world, this at the moment is kind of a bit of a building site it's probably why it's been left like this but i did notice in 
to a video it was I watched the other day. Was it when they were doing the milking? No, they were getting the, the um, sort of the temporary milking parlour. There was a big metal structure, like a framework for a building, seemed to be going up roughly where that little pasture is, I think. Interesting to see what that turns out to be. Let's go down this narrow route. So, I'll head back, we'll drop these off. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put them yet. But I'll come back, grab the rest, and then the silage bales I'll take and I will sell. And then... Well, yeah, then we'll complete the contract. The contract was for 26 grand with lease of their equipment, and that brings it down to about 24. So we will have made a little bit of money. Possibly enough to buy our first field, actually. Because they were for 17, 16 grand. There was one for 20 and one for a little bit more. So potentially, I could buy a field. Do I buy a field or do I buy myself a cheap little tractor, you know? So I can at least do a few bits here and there. I don't know. I'm going to have to give it some thought. Interesting. Okay. That wasn't so bad. Pull right out of here. Do you turn in? Yeah. Probably not a great idea to drive up on the uh, on the curbs. I'm trying to find. I'm not sure whereabouts it is. There's a bit where they normally go mowing, and I don't know if it's um. I think it's next to their golf course over that way. I thought, but there's like a big metal fence. And when they were trying to do their silage work. They couldn't get the new silage harvest or the silage harvester wouldn't go through the gaps. They took the metal fence off. They were trying to take the posts apart to get it through and it wouldn't fit. But I can't work out where that is. I'm going to have to go back and check. It's a great thing about having the channel there. All the videos. And you go back and you can do research. <laughs> you can go and look at stuff, which is what I've been doing. It's probably, it took a little while to get this up and running because I was going backwards and forwards and I was watching videos and trying to find what bits of equipment they had and that, you know, what colour and that kind of stuff. We've gone well over time already, but nothing unusual there, is it? Let's get the old indicator. Is a swing out nice and wide so we come straight in through the gateway. Somewhere to put them actually, just some grass maybe? Or to put them up around the back? I'm just trying to think. If they're going to feed the sheep, where's the best place to put these? I might just put them in the grass, actually. And then they can be moved around wherever they need to be moved around, I suppose. They might, they might get put away in a shed, they might get... I don't know what... <laughs> Who knows? I haven't got that far. Please don't fall over the place. That's the only thing with this. Drop. Nice and gentle. Excellent. Right. I'll see it back when I'm done. It should be about 30 bales, I reckon. Two stacks of 14 with a couple spare, I think. And then we can complete the contract. And that'll be our first day. I know we didn't get it to lunch. Was it lunchtime? Was it just after lunchtime? And, uh, and then we'll see what happens as we move into... Um, I think I'm on one day months as well. As we move into September, let's see what happens. I might be able to help moving cattle around and that kind of stuff as well. No traffic that makes a change. It's 4.23 in the afternoon, early evening, I suppose. Well, afternoon really for August. Uh, I ended up selling the eight silage bales up at Homestead where I was delivering the rest of them 
I made 13 grand on eight bales. I'm just thinking now, uh, there's two stacks of 14, so 28, yeah, what's 30? 30 bales, if I'd have wrapped them all and sold them all, I could have made an absolute fortune. But I'm investing in my future. Let's call it that. <laughs> um, I'm going to spend a bit of time on this, go and look at the cows in the pasture and just chill out, I think. I'll get this delivered. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Let's unload that. Those two can stack up. Well, they'll just go at the bottom and then um, they'll get moved around as necessary. As I said earlier, I don't know when they're going to end up, but we'll see. I'm trying to find the best angle, really, for just sticking those in front. Job done. I meant to say as well, as I walked through earlier when we first got here, something I noticed and didn't point out. And it's a pity, it's something that's missing from FS22, I think. If you remember the animals, when you would feed the animals and they would leave mess and that to be cleaned up, you know, so you could use a scraper tractor and you'd clean up, you know, whatever you were going to do. We've got a scraper tractor here. Now, again, it's not what they've got, but it's close, I think. Oh, you've got a little scraper tractor here, look. Well, leveler on there. How cool is that? Anyway, I'm very happy. Like I said, I'm going to watch the cows for a bit. Then I'm going to go and grab my van, and I'll head back, put my feet up, have a kip, and I'll see you probably in September. Uh, oh, that's a point. Contract. Uh, let's complete on that. Oh, it's a harvesting one there. That's going to be interesting. Uh, so collect on that. 24,958. Thank you very much. What's that saying? Oh, okay. Harvest the canola in field 22. Take the product to oil mill. Um, you know what? I might do. I'm just thinking. I'm looking at the machinery that you're given. I don't know. If that's an ideal, will they even go through the single gates? I don't know if it will, you know. Something interesting to start tomorrow with. I'm looking at the baling contracts. I was hoping for one with rat bales, but round. But I think these are all square balers. Pretty sure these are all for square balers. Yeah, that's that one's got the zerion. I mean, that's still a fair old size. Magnum, magnum, big old fent. Oh, that has got the uh, the clone big M harvester uh, uh, mower. That's bales and wraps. I was just thinking if we could do some hay, maybe. What's that one? That's wrap. That's wrap. So that one's the only one for hay. Do I do the same thing and bring them hay bales as well? Really be a proper suck up. <laughs> or do I do some canola just for me? I don't own a silo. I haven't got anywhere to put anything, but I could sell the product and make a little bit of money. But I'm just thinking for that price, how big is field 22? Let's have a look. Up there. Um, I suppose it's a fair size field. It just depends what you'd get off of it. Or do I just plump them? No, you know what? I think I might. Why not? Gives me a job. If I'm going to be here to do some contracting work, I might as well do some for myself anyway. Let's borrow items. And that's where we'll leave it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.